Cool. All right, so welcome everyone to today's Fight Back session. I am Lily, I'm the coordinator of this series and I'm with Founders Lane. So while everybody is still dropping in, let me start off by telling a couple of words about who we are and the mission that we are on with this live event series. Hi from India, Switzerland. Yes, please use the chat. This is your conversation tool to engage with the speakers. Please share with us where you're dialing in from. This is always super exciting. Brussels, beautiful. Um, let me tell you a couple of words about Founders Lane. This is a, a corporate venture builder and we're active in Europe, Asia and the MENA region. So what we do is we partner up with large industry players and jointly build digital solutions for big economic problems. So we are entrepreneurs at heart and always aiming to find new solutions and driving society forward. So we have a special expertise in climate and health with more than 20 years of expertise in building new enterprises. And Founders Lane is the only corporate venture builder active with a dual partner for corporates and offering end-to-end -end services. And fight back is the word that we coined in this context, because especially in these present times of massive business disruptions, we want to contribute by hosting these free trusted spaces to equip our business leaders and companies uh, with actionable insights and advice to not only survive, but really thrive in this digital economy that awaits us. And in today's conversation, we'll explore innovating in the new normal. And I'll be in the chat moderating the questions. And I see, yeah, Spain, hi. <laughs> uh, and you are joining today's conversation with three remarkable people. So ladies first, let me start off by introducing Professor Ivanka Wisnitsch. She's professor at the Azada Business School. And hi. There. Hi, Ivanka. So good to have you here. She will share with us her insights and view on how this current post-corona world situation and explaining how to effectively use this crisis to foster innovation. Welcome, Ivanka. Hi. Uh, joining her conversation with Ivanka will be Felix Steritz. He's the co-founder and CEO of Founders Lane, the, uh, and also a serial entrepreneur and author and board member of the Digital Leaders at the World Economic Forum. Welcome, Felix. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Hi. And now to kick off this session, let me hand over to today's moderator, Matthias Walter. He's the head of platforms and ecosystems vertical at Founders Lane and creator of the Platform Innovation Kit. Welcome, Matthias. Yeah, hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening around the world. Um, it's really great to be here today to have this uh, hopefully very interesting and insightful conversation with, uh, with Ivanka and with Felix. Um, before we start and going into this, uh, into this session, um, let me share you some thoughts. And um, also in our webinar, we will give you the chance to, have, um, uh, 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 to ask questions at the end. So we plan to have 10 minutes at the end where you can ask questions in the chat or in the Q&A panel. And then Lily will take care of this, and then we, uh, so Ivanka, Felix, or myself, we will uh, hopefully answer your questions. Um, so before we start, um, let me share some thoughts. Um, maybe you heard about Andy Grove. Andy Grove was the founder of Intel, the semiconductor uh, company. And he wrote a book, a remarkable book about, uh, which is called Only the Paranoid Survived. And he introduced a concept which is called the strategic inflection point. And the strategic inflection point is something like it's, 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 it's a time in the life of a business when something really fundamentally changed and uh, um, really everything around this business really changes irrevocably, um, so completely. And they really have to go into a very heavy innovation process to reinvent themselves. And the question for us in this conversation today is really, do we see such kind of a major inflection point right now for corporate innovation? So have all those corporates which are going through this corona crisis right now and also maybe with the climate change uh, in the ecosystem, do they really have to go through this kind of major inflection point and how can they really change? How can they change their business? What needs to be changed? Um, what, how can they reimagine the future? Maybe how can they uh, engage with the right talent, engage with the ecosystem around them. So this is, those are all those kind of uh, things we want to explore further in this conversation. And to give you more kind of an, um, um, thoughts uh, to think about, um, I would like to uh, ask Ivanka to share her thoughts about this whole thing, uh, what she currently uh, 
witnesses, what she currently sees when she talks to corporates about corporate innovation. So Ivanka, maybe can you share us some thoughts? Sure, Matthias, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you Founders Lane for hosting me. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here and to, to join this conversation. I think for a lot of us, this is probably one of the key ones to have. So um, let me start by saying that we are really living in devastating times. And this is really stating the obvious and um, not just when it comes to the healthcare outcomes, but also economic outcomes. Uh, finally, the two are strongly related. Um, I just recently read in New York Times that we are about to face catastrophic hunger. So, um, no words to explain how bad this is, right? And uh, moreover, it's likely that we are living only through the phase one of the crisis. Judging by the Oxford studies, but also a number of others from Imperial College and from the US, uh, there seems to be, this seems to be a scenario that will hold on for at least a while, uh, if not one or two years, right? So bad news all over the place, but enough with the bad news, right? We are hearing that all the time and that there is no need to repeat it. Uh, the net effect is going to be negative, but it's most likely not going to be homogenous. And there will be winners as well as losers from this crisis like any other. And this is what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk about what will differentiate winners from losers. And by winners, I don't mean just short-term companies that have experienced the upsurge in demand due to the fact that they're in e-commerce or some of the verticals they're experiencing positive effects of the crisis. I'm talking about the companies that are going to be able to reap benefits from this discontinuity continuity and from this infliction point that Matthias um, has described. And equally, when I talk about losers, I don't mean just those that are experiencing the short-term difficulties like airline industries or tourism. I'm talking about uh, those who will not be able to adapt and make best use of this crisis. All right, so here are three things that um, I could come up with, three factors that I see differentiating those that are able to um, able to reap the, uh, the 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 discontinuity and the inflection points, and those that are going to become victim of it. So the first one is obviously the industry differences. Not all industries are equally affected, and if you look at the Board of Innovation data and their projections, uh, there is likely uh, to be a range between positive impact of the crisis for the industry such as e-commerce, all the way up to the uh, minus 50% or more decrease in demand and revenues for the industry such as tourism. Um, and here we are taking Q2 to Q4 as a reference of this year, of course. So there is definitely a difference in the industries and how you are going to adapt will depend on where, which industry you're in. But there are some of the factors that will be important across the industry and uh, that, do, that are not determined by where you're at. So I want to really talk and focus about those. And the first one, uh, this actually the second in my list, is the liquidity and the ability to invest in innovation. So um, liquidity is not just important in terms of survival. Uh, it is also important for the ability of companies to invest their way out of this recession. And um, this is not just guesswork, uh, we have actually fundamentally solid um, uh, academic evidence from the previous crisis that companies that were able to maintain and even increase their strategic investments were able to actually come out of the crisis stronger. So my colleague Dries Fams, for example, in his webinar a couple of weeks back has cited uh, research done on the 2001-2002 crisis that shows that there were two types of companies, those that uh, shrank and that uh, decreased their uh, critical investments and those that maintained them. Four years down the road, in terms of the stock price effects, those that were able to maintain and even increase the investments in innovation and other key strategic resources were actually increasing their performance uh, 300% and more. So, um, so this is, this, is, this is clear, right? Investing your way out of the crisis when it comes to strategic investments like innovation is, a, is an incredibly important uh, factor of 
winning or losing. Uh, moreover, in 2008 crisis, we have seen even more substantial evidence of that. Uh, Professor Yanis Ioannou performed an analysis of companies and their behavior in 2008 crisis. And what he shows that uh, actually there is a, a positive effect of the crisis for the, for the investments in, in, in the innovation and the stakeholder relationship. So while 2001-2002 uh, study shows that uh, there is only 25% of companies that fall in that cap of investors. In the 2008 crisis, there seems to be a better evidence of companies uh, being able to uh, maintain their investments. And similarly, uh, the 2008 study shows a positive result on return on assets, in this case, from, from the investments. So to summarize uh, on the investment in innovation, let me uh, quote another CEO of Intel, Craig Barrett, who in 2009 said, uh, you cannot save your way out of crisis, you can only uh, invest your way out of crisis. And, um, and that is my uh, m first message to the leaders of the companies. Uh, are you going to be those who invest your way out of the crisis? What can you do in order to maintain your investments in the innovation and even increase them, because this is the good time to make investments. There's plenty of uh, good resources as well as talent available, and um, tech giants are those who, who are generally um, uh, knowing that, like Intel. And then to everyone else, even if you're not leading the company, what can you do to appeal to the leadership? Can you send an email? Can you tell a story about how important this is? Because I think that particularly in Europe, we need more of those who are, uh, who are investing in innovation. So that's basically on the investment side. Now, the, the third thing that I think is relevant here is what companies are actually doing and how they're acting in this context. And there we see two different types. One is, is reactive and rigid. So companies that are playing more of a wait and see and stick to the old plan until something happens. And honestly, I wouldn't even um, call this a plan. This is more of, a, um, of the aftermath of either lack of leadership or hierarchical um, structures and organizations that are not able to respond fast enough to a crisis that has appeared literally overnight. So, uh, so that I think is number one. Um, you don't want to fall in that, um, in that part, the reactive and the rigid. The good news is, however, that there are many companies that are proactive and they're, that are looking progressively at this. And by this, I mean experimenting and looking for other ways how to resolve, resolve the challenges that, that, that are being thrown at us and even looking to get ahead um, and in, innovate uh, towards the new normal. And, um, and here, I, I, would, I think that there is definitely an advantage of companies like um, Enel or FC Barcelona that I work with who um, are, have had innovation organizations that are able actually to uh, take on this experimental and agile way of working, whether these are crowdsourcing platforms, hubs that collaborate with startups, communities of employees that are focused on the particular topic of their interest. So having those innova innovation organizations is certainly an asset, and we are seeing the benefits of those, particularly in the times of crisis. But we are seeing another thing. We are seeing employee activism and a shift towards agility. We are seeing people more interested to take initiative. And that goes above and beyond of, of what organizational structures we have. So. Um, I think that, uh, that this is something to capitalize on. And here I would uh, like to say that if you're a leader of an organization, um, you want to ask yourself, am I starting a task force to look at uh, threats and opportunities that are coming out of this um, environment? What am I doing in order to be able to uh, adapt out of this, right? And if you are, um, perhaps not a leader of an organization, but you're working 
you, and you, you care about your organization, your question could be, how can I influence this? Is there an idea that I can pitch? Or is there even a WhatsApp group of employees that I can create so that we can you know, plan better and, and uh, adapt better to this? Uh, for example, I, I teach this at the business school, as Lily mentioned, we are creating uh, more and more of these little organizational uh, mechanisms, such as simple WhatsApp groups that help us to exchange practices quicker. And it has proven to be very simple and very, very relevant tools. So there are certainly, there's certainly space and importance for large investments, but there is also a lot of space for increasing agility on the, in the day-to-day -day working environment and hopefully keeping it for after the crisis. So reactive, pro proactive, and then finally, uh, we are seeing some revolutionary organizations. Uh, and these may be new ones that we are, haven't, that haven't been you know, the, the pioneers of the previous um, decades, but those that will come to shape this decade. Uh, after 2001, 2002 crisis, we have seen Netflix emerge and many more. Um, after 2008, Airbnb and other unicorns of the shared economy popped up. The question that I want to leave you with is who are going to be the unicorns of 2020 great lockdown, as it is called? And I can talk another 15 minutes on this, so I'm, I don't want to take too much of my time. But um, let's just say that um, ed tech, learning space, virtual entertainment, is high on my um, on my agenda when it comes to uh, when it comes to engaging and 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 following up with them. So so that's it in terms of the the three factors that it term it, uh, determine winners from losers. Now, the last thing um, perhaps is what can you do about it? How can you become an innovator and even a revolutionary uh, one? in these circumstances. And there, I think there are uh, three things to, to keep in mind. Um, it comes mainly from the teaching that I've been doing with the MBAs, uh, something uh, that, that, that um, I've started to pay attention to already in the last, uh, I would say, two or three years. Innovation in this continuous context, more radical forms of innovation, how they happen. And so, um, so from this experience and from this work that I've been doing with um, um, moonshot factories like Telefonica Alpha, I can share three things for you. One is um, observe the signals, gaps, and the workarounds that you can see emerging. And this can be from press or it can be from you know, what you're hearing on the streets or in your environment. Uh, look at just the sheer prevalence of people who are uh, losing healthcare benefits, for example, in the United States due to the unemployment. Uh, changes that, and challenges that people experience while working at home. Um, anxiety, uh, mental health challenges that we're all facing now. These are your signals about the needs that are not uh, being answered in this environment. So these are the glimpses of change for the future. And so, for example, what, what I have been focused on that's closer to me is the sheer number of MBAs who are losing their internships over the summer due to the circumstances. So um, how can I help them to make a productive summer and also at the same time do something that's going to create value for the society and uh, create value for themselves in terms of a, a business opportunity? So that has been my question, my, my signal and, and glimpse of change. The second thing is capitalizing on the customer openness and um, experimentation that goes with it. And here I think about three things. So first of all, if you look at the habits of the customers, of everyone in the society, we're seeing them as being intrinsically disrupted at the moment. This is a, a good time for innovators because uh, there is a behavioral change that's happening for you. Generally, it's really hard to change behavior of people when it's set. Now, this is not the case. Now, it's a good time to come in with a new value proposition. And moreover, the expectations are lower because we are living in unprecedented times. So you can experiment and your customers will help you as you're developing your new value proposition. 
Uh, for example, my students have been very helpful uh, in this new innovation uh, program that I'm developing for them uh, to innovate their way out of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, open is they're very high. So you can collaborate with them. You can ask for feedback. So um, this, is, this is the second thing that I think is relevant. And then finally, engaging talent and the ecosystem. Um, drive has never been stronger. We are all, um, you know, um, having this instinct of survival that is, is really coming out of this crisis. And that people more engaged, more, more willing to push hard. And that's what's needed in the context of innovation entrepreneurship. So that grit has never been stronger. And secondly, people are willing to vote. They are willing to help and think beyond their immediate benefit for the benefit of the, of the others. So I think that, you know, uh, as individual, uh, this makes it easier to recruit uh, talent, to find collaborators. As a company, you want to think about how you can, you know, uh, how you can engage talent and how you can motivate them to follow you and to join you in, in solving some of the biggest challenges that we are facing now. Um, that it, I would kind of close it here with these three things, um, Matthias, and uh, let you ask me questions what you thought was relevant, as well as, um, um, as well as the participants. So observing the signals, workarounds, uh, challenges that are emerging, capitalizing on the openness of the customers and willingness to collaborate and experiment with you, and then engaging talent and building ecosystem breaks that can solve the challenges. That's it. Uh, thank you, Ivanka. So really great insights. And um, so not only about what separates the winners and losers, but also that you shared with us some clear uh, actions corporates can do and should do to, to, to become more proactive. Uh, before coming back to your thoughts, maybe I would like also give Felix the chance to share his um, his opinion or better his observations, because uh, as Lindy mentioned at the beginning, you are working very closely with the uh, World Economic Forum. So you work very closely with the leaders of uh, those bigger corporate. And maybe you can share with our audience uh, reactions of uh, of those corporates right now when they go through this crisis is this really in is this crisis an inflection point or is maybe this crisis this corona crisis more kind of an accelerator for something bigger which already happened uh, and, and yeah it's kind of an accelerator so maybe can you share what you see when you work and uh, also talk to those corporates um how they uh, go through this crisis and what they what, yeah, what kind of action they plan to, to take Yeah, thanks. Um, it's 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 not so easy to actually uh, come up with an answer that is straightforward for all the industries. Uh, I think there are some commonalities, as Ivanka already pointed out. Uh, um, it's but it's for sure a little bit too early to say. Uh, we are we are still in a time where where all the where like the more established companies, the industries, they have measures to actually protect the, uh, the employees to keep uh, the companies running as much as, you know, as it is possible. Uh, um, uh, for others, uh, even to actually try to keep the companies just alive. Uh, um, and others, uh, you know, like if you look into more the digital world and the larger platforms, um, they, they actually, they exploded. Uh, so they are just, you know, trying to keep up with the growth. So it's, it's not so easy to generalize. Um, but if you would do so, I think everybody tried to protect first the, the employees. Yeah? And as the larger enterprises are obviously uh, globally, uh, what I currently see in all the discussions in the World Economic Forum, we have the action group uh, where we discuss and uh, listen to different stories every week uh, on Wednesday, actually. So tomorrow again. Uh, well, today. <laughs> You've been working around the clock, Felix. <laughs> uh, as I as mentioned in the very beginning, I had a very, very short night. <laughs> um, uh, so it's today, it's 5.30 then. 
um, uh, and you know if you, many many of them uh, they started to actually uh, um, uh, you know treat the crisis in China. Uh, then uh, it moved to uh, Europe. You know then they have manufacturing facilities in India. Now it's in India. Uh, so I think we are still a little bit in the crisis to respond to the first, uh, uh, um, you know, um, bigger issues that actually occurred. Um, and at the same time, um, uh, what what is now happening is is um, to think about what does it actually mean this next normal. Uh, this is what the uh, what we actually hear a lot about. And here the crisis is in, in, is actually accelerating the trends we have seen already previously. So B two B platforms and all that. Uh, things. So it's more now the, the, the situation that we try to define that and uh, try to analyze, um, or better, better words, we analyze what are the resources we can now contribute to work on the next normal. So this would be the current situation I see there. Um, yeah. And so this goes maybe in line with what you said. So you said also that. Uh, companies have to start kind of smaller technical units, task force to tackle, uh, uh, yeah, the problems, but also having a very agile units, which are really able to uh, to test and then try out things, really test and observe this and see what's happening. So um, is it, is, do you agree with that, what, what, what Felix had mentioned? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wanna I wanna pick up on two things. So first, I I want to uh, I I can't agree more on the on the importance to kind of deal with the crisis, right? It's um, protecting the employees, resolving the immediate challenges, is something that really is occupying leaders' minds. But in the past crisis, we have seen that the best of leaders are also creating systems like task forces in order to in parallel think uh, you know, about the future. So you, you can't be future proof if you're always only thinking about the present. I mean, that is the, you know, in the, that's, that's the, one of the key things that we always learn in innovations that you have to be ambidextrous. You have to be focused with your one hand on solving the problems today and then on your other hand of preparing for the, for the future. And the second thing that um, I really like that you uh, used the word imagine, right? And, um, and this, is, um, this is something that we are seeing also in the innovation practice um, and, and we have been seeing in the, in the past years, there's more and more uh, focus on, you know, how we can develop for future. So, so a lot of innovation that has been happening in past was building on the, you know, identifying the simple challenges that the users are facing today and answering them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Agile design thinking, lean startup are all great methodologies that do exactly that. But with that kind of approach, you don't develop moonshots, right? You do not develop great ideas uh, for the future. So. We are actually now um, developing one methodology that for now we're calling moonshot thinking, though um, you know, uh, I'm very open to hear other, other terms you may have for us. And that is about um, using design methods like um, desired future, future thinking, uh, certain forms of scenario planning in order to leapfrog into the future. And I think that's what's, what's necessary. So, Task forces, people who think about the future while you're solving immediate problems. And secondly, good methodologies to address that, uh, those questions. <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is uh, a good point, uh, methodologies, structures, etc. So, um, Felix, your passion is all about corporate venture building. And this is also very uh, kind of maybe a kind of a new concept where corporates and entrepreneurs very, working very closely together and bring things forward. So how do you think um, um, what needs to be changed from a structural perspective, uh, not only methods or, or yeah, like new methods, like whatever design thing also, but also from a structural perspective, mm. is there also something new needed because old structures are not really serving the purpose of, uh, of, of, of inventing fast enough, big enough. Um, so what do you think? So, so first of all, I think um, that the COVID-19 situation has led to 
the situation that we even need to be more careful with our resources we are actually having. Uh, so we have actually less liquidity uh, and we need to be careful how we use that. Uh, uh, second of all, I think we all in, you know, it doesn't matter where we are, you know, in the world uh, currently, um, it's a crisis um, of, it's a global crisis. Uh, uh, and we are all experiencing that at the same time. And um, this means we also see how vulnerable our whole global system is. Uh, so uh, the whole supply chains and how important actually our health system is. And we see how inefficient certain aspects are. Supply chain, uh, um, health system, transparency in data, the collaboration between uh, governments. Uh. So um, to be a little bit fast forward, because I obviously could talk about this, this little issue here already uh, 15 minutes by myself. Um, I think it is time to stop uh, applying just innovation in theater. Uh. Uh, I think many, many corporations in the past years um, were innovation labs and doing and trying out a lot of things. And there's not a lot of things wrong about it. You know, you can try out stuff. But we also need to understand it's not only a topic for innovation managers. It is a board topic. It is a CEO topic. It is a top agenda point. Uh, it's a responsibility the leaders of the world have. Corporates, investors, entrepreneurs, politicians, everyone at the same time. I can just underline the statement of Ivanka saying we need to innovate our way out of the crisis. Uh, um, exactly, but what does this mean? I mean, innovation out of this crisis means that we cannot just, you know, nothing wrong about buying shoes online, but buying shoes online was, you know, was quite simple. Uh, but touching the systems of health or touching the systems of supply chain or touching the systems which are a little bit more regulated, climate oriented, uh, uh, those are system changes. Uh, that's a totally different animal of complexity. Uh, and exactly here we need to understand this is a broad agenda uh, and here we need to invest the resources we have because human beings, we, are, we, we want to pay for, for actually new solutions. We want to have a better world. We want to have a safer planet. So it's not that we, that we are actually innovating our way out of this crisis and we, we, we need to, you know, um, have, a, have, a, have a worse life quality. I think everybody in the whole world is actually currently experiencing, wow, if our health system would be more efficient, I would, be, I would pay for more. I, I would actually do that. Yeah? And um, so I, I think there's lots of new collab uh, collaboration possible and not only possible, as well actually needed. Um, and maybe here I make my point and stop talking uh, to get to next questions, yeah. <laughs> as you can see, I'm quite passionate about this kind of topic. And uh, maybe final sentence to that. And no, you cannot uh, do the same thing with venture capital uh, or with buying companies because you, you don't have companies you can invest in that spaces currently uh, or not enough. Uh, and you cannot buy those targets because they're not there currently. Uh, so we need a new system, we need a new model. And, we, and I like to call this the corporate venture building model. Uh. So Thank Matthias, you. before you move on to the next question, do you have a minute just to comment, pick up on something that Felix said? Yeah, yeah, do that, do that. Cool. So I just want to say that I think, Felix, you nailed what I hate about the moonshot thinking phase and, uh, phrase, and that is, it's thinking, right? What we really need is moonshot doing, right? We have um, systemic challenges and uh, many of those are related to the infrastructure like you pointed out, uh, supply chain infrastructures, energy infrastructures, climate results are, are evident from that, healthcare infrastructures. And that does not uh, get solved by acting locally. So the, the very minimum that's, that's required to, to get through this and, and to advert other crises is, is two things. Like within companies, uh, innovation needs to be taken seriously and taken from theater to action. And that means organizational structures that have clear reporting to the, to the top management level and even to the board level, depending on the uh, type of innovation 
that means KPIs, investments. And um, moreover, I think this is becoming the time for cross uh, corporate and cross organizational um, uh, new forms, ecosystem forms. Um, what comes to mind, I was about to mention it um, a, a little bit later, but free electrons, right? Uh, organizations, collaborative organizations that are making joint investments in, uh, in new startups, moonshot investment programs that span regions, right? So um, that's just two uh, that I could think of off the top of my head and I'm happy to talk more about it. But yes, I mean, we need serious action. Yeah, this is also something we observed here is um, um, we, you know, we, see, we, we saw the rise of those mega platforms like Amazon, Uber, and, and so on, Alibaba, Ping An, and so on. And what we, when we talk to corporates, we see that those corporates now face immense pressure. So, and they're also stronger thinking about how can we better collaborate with other corporates to join forces and maybe then not only kind of counter attack those platforms, but also having more strength, more impact to the to society, to our yeah, broader goals we want to achieve. Um, Felix, is this also something you, you observe when you work with, together with those corporates that they say, hey, as we alone, we can't really achieve that much of imp that, 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 that big impact we want to have. It's more like, yes, we need to join forces with other corporates. Is this also true from, from your side? Yeah, I mean, there's a political correct answer, and then and then there is an honest answer. Yeah, um, as we are here, a very close group. <laughs> uh, I will I will I will probably stay with the real honest answer. Yeah, uh, the honest answer is um, uh, currently it is it is a survival game for many of those corporates. Huh? So as said, it's about taking the right countermeasures. Second of all, asking yourself what is the next normal. And, uh, and I have a lot of respect for all the leaders currently out there, um, including, I mean, leaders like politicians and so on, um, because they have to cope with their current systems. And at the same time, they have to think about how to define and how to get to this next normal as fast as possible. Yeah. So, and, and, and here, I think the, we had already today the term ambidextrous, or, you know, we like also to call it hybrid organization. So, so at the same time, your leader have actually two so it's already demanding what they are doing every day, but now they have two jobs. Huh? They have to take care that, that the current system is running and they have to fully focus on what means actually the future. And they need to really build it. And this is totally, this, those are really two systems. Huh? Uh, and we don't have any time to lose. And, um, and yes, there's a, there's a lot happening. Um, but, a, but, a, but a corporate is currently, you know, this is already taking a lot of capacity. Huh? And, uh, and and even that they know I can currently um, not solve climate change. A CEO probably doesn't think about that currently. Uh, they are currently thinking about what can I contribute with my assets currently in those kind of areas uh, specifically. And they are interested now um, to explore um, to build alliances and collaboration models like cross corporate, cross country, uh, like never before. But I think we are here very in the early days. My personal opinion on it is we need it. Otherwise, we cannot solve it. But I think in 2020, a lot of time is actually taking care that you build this next normal, define the next normal within your space and set up new collaboration structures beyond that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Ivanka, um, we also saw before the corona crisis that a lot of corporates went through this kind of change adopting their goals to climate change and, you know, and, and yeah and, and fighting against those uh, climate issues we have as a whole society as the whole uh, mankind on our whole world uh, do you think that this uh, corona crisis has a major impact to those environmental goals or is it uh, or will it remain after the corona crisis is maybe over in 6 months 1 year or whatever what do you think is the impact? Is it more kind of a break or is it really an accelerator? What what is your opinion about that? So I'm so I'm gonna I'm gonna steal from uh, Felix, steal with pride from Felix and say I can <laughs> tell you what um what what I think is right and I can tell you what I think is a reality. Um I think that um I think there's definitely an 
maintained interest in um, stakeholder goals, but perhaps those are now more focused on managing, uh, you know, the, the relationship with the employees, with the supply chain, and uh, more looking at the human challenges that we are seeing uh, from this corona crisis. So I think that in terms of the commitment to shared value to the stakeholders, I think that the leaders maintained it and even, you know, leaned in in, in some aspects. But um, I don't have the data to prepare, but I, I, I would imagine and, um, and Professor Yanis Yuanu shared a great uh, webinar on this, that, uh, that there is a, a tilt towards, uh, towards more, more other stakeholders. Now, uh, at the same time, uh, the world is watching, right? And, um, and the, the leaders know that. And as the time progresses and we learn how to survive this best, um, I think that there, is, um, uh, there, there will be a maintenance of the, of the, client, uh, of the interest in, 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 in climate, uh, climate challenges. Now, um, I think what's really interesting and where we should focus more is what are those challenges that are underpinning both? And this takes us back to the infrastructure, to the, you know, focus on the long term. And the systems that we have built that are more to tilted towards the short term and perhaps uh, more towards shareholder rather than stakeholder benefit. Now, there are a lot of a lot of these issues. Some of them are uh, can be taken on by by um, companies. The others are really for the for the politicians and for the for the leaders of, of countries as well as uh, uh, other organizations. Yeah, for, for for me, a clear point uh, for change is always the motivation. So can we align on a on a shared purpose to get this motivation to change anything? What we currently see with the um, corona crisis is that around the world, corporates, startups, people going through this crisis, now they have a, a kind of a shared purpose, fight against corona and get back to kind of normal as, uh, as fast as possible. You mentioned uh, um, we need, or corporates need a kind of a long-term vision, long-term goals to um, uh, looking at their ambitions to maybe fight against climate, maybe having um, viable business models also in the future. So how can we achieve this long-term vision? On the other side, we have those kind of short-term goals. So like leaders, managers are only maybe uh, measured against two-year goals. So how can we combine this? Or uh, maybe, um, yeah, maybe Felix and <laughs> you both can share. How would be a good setup uh, uh, having a long-term purpose or, sh or vision with short-term goals and measurements? How can we align this? Ladies Felix, first. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, right. So I, I, um, I mentioned task force, right? So if you think about uh, the, the organizations and the leaders, leaders are uh, usually have, have the infrastructure for the, to support their decisions. So, um, I think this is this is no different than that. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm not undermining the the difficulty of it. Don't get me wrong. I think it's it's always hard to focus on the long term, and particularly when uh, you are facing an immediate challenge like this one. But um, but that does not mean that uh, that that's not important, or that the best in class won't be uh, doing that. And um, I'm going to go back to what uh, uh, what. What, what the CEO of uh, of Intel said, and there are many other quotes. Uh, you can you can take that uh, you can take a page from the Jeff Bezos's book or uh, uh, Starbucks CEO. So it's there's a number of leaders who are you know committed at the same time to the, on the, on for for the long run, right? Uh, and uh, in order to to do that, beside that leadership um, and also communication to the stakeholder. The ability to walk that talk and to be able to create the, the the structures that support that in terms of the key leaders in, ter in terms of symbolic actions that that support it is is a fundamental importance. Yeah, Felix. <laughs> what um, I think uh, I think three things. <laughs> Number one uh, uh, is. I really believe that the last time we really built something over generations, yeah, uh, that was really huge, have been the big uh, cathedrals, 
like in Barcelona, right, uh, Ivanka? Uh, this was like you know multi generational thing where we all work towards a big, 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 big objective uh, uh, here in Europe. Um, bigger goal. So uh, just to you know, it, it, normally we are now in this short term frame. So first thing is. Um, uh, it is probably needed that we that we have governments uh, also incentivizing the opportunities here. Uh, I'm not saying punishment, but I'm saying that actually corporate leaders go into these directions uh, um, for those long-term goals. Uh, and uh, I don't see that currently. Um, and I think we need a lot more conversation on that. And we need this conversation actually now, actually yesterday. Uh, that's number one. Um, Number two is um, there's a lot of pressure coming from the outside, so from society, because we now feel it. Previously, climate change was something that is quite far away. But now we see with health, uh, with COVID-19, we see how vulnerable the whole system is. And if climate is just somehow close to that, or some people even say way, 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 you know, more harmful, then, then we need to do something. Uh, so I think uh, there is some societal pressure coming now. Uh, and the third thing is, um, I, I think we just need leaders uh, that, that, um, that bring this purpose. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So Matthias, I, I suppose like if, if you know, I, if I summarize what Felix is saying uh, and, and what I've been saying as well, we need, uh, you know, leaders with purpose, we need also interorganizational uh, structures that help with long-term goals that exceed one generation. Uh, we need also task forces in, inside of the companies that are going to take on that thinking to the next normal use uh, tools like future thinking or um, desired futures. Also, who have accountability to execute um, on those, um, on those um, uh, results of the task force analysis or whatever the desired future ends up being. Thank you for summarizing this. Um, and before going into uh, maybe the, the Q&A part of this webinar, um, you all know my passion is all about platforms and, uh, and building platforms as multi-sided business models uh, together with corporates. Um, and we saw in the last years the rise of those platforms as maybe the most dominating business model um, of the last 10 years or so, uh, and also of the dig digitalization. Um, how do you imagine this trend will go on? Will there be maybe mega platforms or meta platforms? Or what, what do you think is the, will be the role of platforms, maybe also in a positive way to bring different corporates together under a sure, shared purpose, under a shared goal. Uh, how can you imagine platforms should be used in the future to, uh, yeah, to drive this change, maybe to uh, accelerate or, yeah, what do you think? Uh, it's a question to you both, Felix and uh, Ivanka, <laughs> so you can. Um, Felix, this time you first. <laughs> Oh, this is a difficult question uh, yeah. to give a clear answer on that. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I always try to be uh, actionable. Uh, um, I think I think this is this is this is obviously a trend, and we will have uh, from B two B two C platforms, which we are using nowadays, like Amazon, and you know, or depending on where you are living currently, obviously in this world, uh, Alibaba, and so on. We we obviously see more and more B two B platforms coming. And, uh, and and this obviously in the more not so much regulated industries, and uh, and now as next step it will go into more and more regulated industries, uh, and um, and so so I think uh, mega platforms like uh, um, like like Amazon taking over the world, um, I think this I think this will not happen, and I think this is also not good. Uh, I think uh, here regulation and politician. Politicians will, will will hopefully also take care yeah? uh, that that we have a very very efficient market. I think we all know that competition is very important, and uh, um, but it's very 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 hard to, uh, to actually say. Yeah? So maybe Ivanka, what is uh, what is uh, your view uh, from a more academic perspective? Is uh, how do you foresee that? So I I think that. Uh... 
it goes back to, to what we initially talked about, which is the types of problems that have been solved, right? Um, the platforms we have seen so far were really well adjusted to solve um, problems that are more consumer oriented, I would say simpler and very scalable, right? So you create a, a two-sided platform generally where on one side you have customers and users like, um, you know, uh, take, take app stores, right? You have users of the iPhone and then on the other side you have app developers who can provide solutions. So this is a typical two-sided platform and it's great for uh, simple consumer uh, problems. Now, what we are seeing now and what we have been talking so far are much more complex problems and pro problems that involve several stakeholders. And what, what I think is uh, what we need and what is starting to emerge uh, in the context like energy and healthcare are more these complex platforms, the more ecosystem oriented platforms that are uh, coalitions, um, free electrons or any other, right? That, uh, that actually put together uh, different, different stakeholders that together have to think about the, about the solution. Uh, previously, that was done by governments, that was done by, um, you know, uh, by political entities. Now we're starting to see those models appearing also in the corporate world. Competition collaboration is starting to lose boundaries. We see also pharmaceutical companies collaborating uh, on the pre-market stage to come up with certain drugs that will solve uh, problems, uh, whether it's coronavirus or, or others. Uh, great point with the ecosystem-oriented platform. And uh, I also see that a lot of questions are stacking up here in the chat right now. Um, um, so it was a great conversation so far. So let's have a look at those, um, at those questions. Um, Lily, maybe can you take uh, and read some of them? Sure. Let's scroll up a bit. So Luis, I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, asked how could you elaborate on agility and practices on physical products? Because we already talked on um, health. Um, so physical products in highly regulated industries such as pharma. How can so they be agile? How can they be agile? So I'll, I'll, I'll give you one example. I'm working. Uh, well, I have been working closely with one company that has been developing, uh, you know, mental health solutions. Um, and that was particularly a software. So agility was easier. But there have been others who have been developing software that, that also um, are related to the, to the VR solutions. We haven't seen any differences in terms of processes. Yes, physical products have generally longer cycles. But what you're seeing is that at the stage of the concept development, uh, there is more ability to, uh, to experiment even on the physical uh, product. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, mock-ups, uh, prototypes, um, Google Glass uh, prototypes was famously made uh, for the first one for just a couple of hours worth of analyzing how the user experience would look like. Um, I'm talking about the use of, um, of computer-aided uh, design simulations in the development of potential solutions, particularly in the pharma, pharmaceutical industries, if we're talking about the actual drugs, are now, uh, is now benefiting a lot from the use of AI in terms of modeling. So um, I'm, I'm not arguing that there's no difference, but there is definitely an in increase in the influx of agile also on the physical side. Yeah. Cool. There is um, Yelto. <laughs> I hope I'm saying it right. Um, he asked Ivanka, if you think about the future after post COVID crisis, how do you link innovation with sustainability? So, so I suppose that was, uh, that was asked probably earlier, right? Uh, so yeah, I, th I think we've uh, we've talked about that extensively. Um, I think I think sustainability is uh, is is a core to it, right? Um, yeah, I'm not going to take more time to answer this question because I think we, since since the question was posed, uh, we talked about it a lot. Yeah, uh, Horatio was asking: Coronavirus is a one-time event, or do you think that companies will have to prepare more of these disruptive events in the future? Yeah, that, that was, uh, so, so Felix 
hinted on this, so I'm not gonna talk about climate here. I'm just going to point to uh, to the to the conversations uh, that Bill Gates is inviting. Um, this is unlikely to be a one-time event, and we are likely to see more of the uh, the viruses and pandemics coming up um, in 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 near future. Felix, do you wanna say something on this regarding crisis? Echo on this. Uh, uh, Climate, climate. And plus, I uh, would like to add uh, climate, obviously, in, in various forms. And then additionally, there is um, there is there's, uh, probably a crisis coming, uh, or there's a risk also as well from a cybersecurity uh, perspective. Because obviously, when you go into more uh, platform and data and inter in interconnection, uh, I think uh, also this is the field we need to prepare. Regardless, uh, you need hybrid organizations and you need to be ready for other crises to come. Uh, someone just posted uh, a comment, Vuka is here to stay. I think that's a, that's a fair, fair argument. Yes. Uh, I think it's, re it's really about what can we really learn out of this crisis. So this is not the first pandemic we, go, we went through in the last year. So it's, uh, I think, the third or the fourth in the last 10 years uh, we observed. And But this is maybe the the hardest, the biggest, uh, with, the, with the highest impact so far. Um, but we, some, somehow it looks like that we are kind of resistant to learn and resistant to change uh, because something like this happened before. So what gives us the confidence that, that corporates and, 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 yeah, and our society really learns from this? What do you think? I mean, I would say we, we already learned a lot. I mean, uh, uh, I think it would be unfair to say that we are, that we are stubborn and that we, that we haven't developed. It would be unfair to many leaders we already have and have. Um, uh, I think the collaboration, the data, the institutions we have created, um, also the response we had here, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's now was the best or could we have done better, but we have collaborated quite well. On many, 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 many levels, and uh, so I think we are learning uh, with every crisis. We are learning. Could we learn more? Probably yes. Uh, but I, but I think we also should acknowledge that we actually move forward. Uh, and uh, yeah. I just like to say one thing that I think is uh, uh, would be really good to maintain as learning from this crisis are the systemic effects and um, the. Uh, the interdependencies that um, actually Felix hinted earlier. So we ha now have the pandemic and, uh, and we are seeing what an exponential trend really means on one example, but this example can play out in different contexts as well. And cyber breaches are one, for example. So we, are, we have a more interdependent world. Um, how do we make sure that it's anti-fragile in the words of uh, Nassim Taleb. Yes. Right. Yeah, as we as we coming to an end with our webinars, maybe there's is there kind of uh, some final additional points you would like to raise or you want to mention, um, um, so that we kind of close with maybe some kind of uh, uh, wrap up or what do you what do you think maybe final final thoughts. Felix, do you want to go ahead? <laughs> and then we close with Ivanka. Uh, just to answer one of those questions, uh, uh, because we are here talking uh, also a lot about those environmental topics, and uh, and it uh, it's also to my final statement. Um, I think all the like all the top, topic corporate venture building platforms ecosystems. Um, it is so important, we need to understand that it should be a CEO topic. Uh, and uh, this also includes the topics of sustainability, environmental topics. Uh, I think we shouldn't create more and more people uh, taking care of so important topics that are not named CEO. It is a CEO topic uh, and we should drive it from the CEO uh, every day, not just two or three hours a month. Uh, so this is what, what we should actually take out of this and we should motivate our CEOs, our leaders to go into that direction. Uh, we should stop with the theater and we should take action. 
So then to build on that, I'm going to say, uh, whether you're a leader or not, make sure you participate in the process. So lean in when it comes to innovation, lean in by showing an example, by, you know, um, creating a WhatsApp group or by investing in, uh, in creating a, a, a new uh, moonshot factory that will help us advert climate change, right? All of the, uh, the answers are correct. Just make sure you do it. I love it. Thank you Amazing. so much. Cool. Great, thank you for having this conversation and uh, sharing your thoughts and insights. So I think uh, we could really learn a lot. Also the people in the chat said that they really loved the discussion and that they learned a lot of things. So thank you for that, um, uh, Lily. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm gonna wrap up the session. I'm so excited. We are finishing on time. It was so insightful. Thank you so much for your time and effort. The recording will be available as well afterwards. Uh, for upcoming session, please go to sessions.fanaflin.com slash next. We have one for circular economy and high performing teams next week. So two more sessions next week. So thank you so much for being here. It's all about how to respond to this crisis and accelerate in this new normal. Thank you for being here and have a wonderful rest of the day and rest of the week. Stay healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Founders Lane. Thank you, Ivanka. Thank you.